You've decided you want to be an artist. Now what? Today, I want to talk a little bit about one of the places that I think is got to be in the top schools for art education, definitely in the United States and probably in the entire world, and that's the Watts Atelier. Watts Atelier offers online programs. They also have a brick and mortar school that's located in Southern California. The founder and lead instructor is Jeff Watts. So I'll be joined by Rebecca Rand, who is a YouTuber and also a student of the Watts Atelier Online School. Rebecca does some cool videos where she weekly comes in and sort of gives the, a rundown of what she's been working on uh, that week. So what is the difference between an atelier and an art school? The word atelier is a French word that translates in English to mean workshop or studio. So it's a little bit more of a traditional or old school system, if you will. And it consists of a master and apprentices who are attending the atelier for an indefinite amount of time, which is a bit different from the way that we interpret schools because we have a very defined period of time for which we attend a school. You can study for 20 years. Uh, also in ateliers, a lot of the students who are the apprentices will go on and study there for such a long time, they become teachers there. And I know that that's true at the Watts Atelier. All of the instructors went through the Watts programs. So I thought it would be beneficial to get the perspective of a student at an atelier. Here's my interview with Becca. Hello. My name is Becca Rand. I am currently living in Tucson, Arizona, and I do freelance graphic design and illustration for my bread and butter job. And on the side, I'm learning to draw or improving my drawing through the Watts Atelier online drawing training program. But before I moved here, I always loved art as a kid. I had really great art teachers when I was in middle school and high school. And when I went to college, I, well, a little background on this is that both my parents are doctors, my sister's a doctor, both my brothers have masters in engineering, and I just did not think that it was cool to be an artist. I was like, I need to be a scientist. So when I was in school, in college, I was trying to figure out what science career I could do that would be fun, and the answer to that was none. There was no science career that I wanted to do, so I ended up majoring in design. So I worked as a designer for a couple years, but ultimately decided that I really wanted to be like a real a real artist and do more creative work. I still love design, but this is something that I wanted to do for a long time. Cool. Uh, where did you go to art school? So I went to school at University of Arizona, which is actually in Tucson. So I graduated and then moved and then came back to Tucson. But they have a um, visual communications program, which is split into design and illustration. So I did the design track. Uh, and do you work for a, you said you're a freelance designer? Mm -hmm. Do you have, did you just build over time, build a, a list of clients that you, that you mm -hmm. work for? When I was in living in DC, working as a designer, I kind of like hopped around a couple of different places. I was working at a nonprofit and then I tried an agency that was like more corporate agency. And then I tried an agency that was more of like focused towards nonprofits and science. Ultimately I realized it was just not the place wasn't the problem. It was that I really wanted to be doing like individual self-motivated creative work like painting and drawing and, and some illustration work falls into that category too but so I met a lot of people when I was hopping around there so I do have a lot of connections now which was why in a lot of ways I'm able to do what I can do now and sort of like work and also learn to draw on the side. Yeah it's great uh, so how did you find uh, the atelier how did you find the Watts Atelier discover the online program? So I had I moved to Tucson and I didn't really know what direction I wanted to go in with my new creative career other than I knew I had to work doing design and some illustration stuff to live. But I decided to take a class at our community college here, which is Pima Community College. And I just went with figure drawing because it seemed like the most basic form of drawing <laughs> that the, and they had a, a class. So I just signed up for it and I loved it. It was so fun. I had a really awesome instructor. Michael Nolan, if you happen to be in Tucson, he is brilliant. So, and he had talked about ateliers in, in our classes and I never really thought about it or heard about it. So after my class ended, I wanted to keep studying, but 
it wasn't really financially viable for me to keep taking classes. And also I just didn't have the time to do that during the day. So I looked online and, and lots of just kept coming up over and over again as one of the best online options and it's reasonably priced. So I decided I would just try it out and I really, really enjoyed the program. How long have you been um, in the online program? I'm coming up on 10 months or so. So I'm about at a year and I have been drawing pretty much every day. I would say 98, 99% of the time get, get it going every day. Great, great. So you set aside a certain amount of time to work? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, when I started, I didn't really have a plan. So I figured I would like try and draw when I had time to draw, which if you are trying to do that, you'll know very quickly that that is never, you will never have time to draw unless you make time to draw. So I, uh, this is rough, but I, I get up at six and then I draw from 6.30 to 9.30 every day because it was the only time that I knew I wasn't going to get interrupted. Wow. So well, that's my thing. Every day, 6.30, barring, you know, vacation or something, but. Yeah, that's commitment right there. So you do try to do that five days a week or you do that seven days a week? Seven. Seven days a week. Okay, so you're you're all in at this point. Yeah, I, I have found with many things that I am not great at moderation. So anytime I vary with my schedule or even, even if I go one day where I'm like, oh, I'll draw in the evening today, it just, it makes it harder for me to get motivated. The next day, it kind of just totally throws me off. So... And I tried a couple things before I committed to this schedule because I do not like waking up early, but this was just what ended up being like the least painful for me because it takes a lot of, um, you just have to push yourself to, to do it every day and it's not fun. And the less decisions you have to make, the better. Not that it's not fun ever, but sometimes it's not fun. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I, I think a lot of times, Jeff, when you when you listen to him speak, he makes a lot of analogies to training for a sport or an elite athlete trying to hone their skills. And, and I identify with that when he says that I'm like, Oh yeah. And I mean, just a little side note, how I came across the atelier is, um, I was just looking around on YouTube and I watched his orientation video that he posted for an incoming class for the physical school. Mm -hmm. And as I'm sitting there listening to him speak, it's like, this person was meant to be my teacher and it took me until now to find where I was supposed to go. Mm -hmm. You know, if I would have discovered it when I was college age, I probably would have picked up and moved and went to the actual school. So I'm going to link up actually to that orientation video so that people can, can check that out because I think, you know, you look at that and you're like, you, you know, right away, if you fit within what their program is about, I think once you, once you kind of see what he's about. Have you watched a lot of his his videos and have you heard him speak or do you follow that at all? Mm -hmm. I've seen I've seen the intro video and also I've watched quite a few of his YouTube videos. Um, but you're right, it, it, there's a lot of sports analogies. And I was, when I was younger, I was a gymnast, which is, I mean, sometimes drawing feels like eerily similar to training yeah. for gymnastics where you're just like yeah. putting in those hours and the, improvements are so small and so incremental um but i think when i was younger i didn't have as much insight into like the value of training and i was much more invested in the value of like being good or winning so this has been really good for me in that way and that it's kind of helped me reframe like what hard work looks like and the value of working hard for the sake of working hard and just for yourself for your self-improvement absolutely oh that's great Oh, what, what I was curious about is what's your, what's your end goal? Like what's your motivation besides always having a lifelong passion for art and really wanting to focus on that and dedicate yourself to that? Is there a specific like field that you want to get into? I mean, are you looking for illustration work? Do you want to do something in another area outside of graphic design? It's funny that I've come this far and I haven't really made a decision about that yet because it's not that I haven't thought about it, but I haven't really done any painting at all. So I haven't even tried out a lot of the stuff that I might consider pursuing later. I've, you know, I've done like some pretty amateur watercolor, but I haven't tried oil paints ever. So I am kind of waiting till I get a little bit further along in the program to decide where I want to go next. 
Um, I originally thought I wanted to do illustration, and I still really love illustration, children's book illustration. I just, I'm not really sure yet. And right now I, I feel like I don't have to make a decision because I'm not good enough to have to make that decision yet. I still have so much training before I have to actually like kind of decide where to focus. I'm not sure to answer that question. Okay. Somewhere. In terms of like your experience with the online program, do you have any like what, like a low time or a high point where you were like, I'm ready to just give this up because I'm so frustrated or, or I'm just kind of like it's, it's run its course in the opposite of that, like a moment during the program where you're like, this is awesome. And, and, and I'm going to continue to do this as long as I can possibly do this. Mm-hmm. So for the best, strangely enough, I would have never expected this, but the things that I find most satisfying are when I go back to stuff that I did when I started and actually review things. And it seems easy now. <laughs> it's not like, woohoo, you know, like a huge accomplishment feeling, but it just, it, it makes you realize that you've improved because it is really hard to see that. And so when you go back to stuff that like, if you're, if you're drawing from the Asaro head or whatever, you go back and it feels kind of like casual almost, that is a huge sense of accomplishment for me because it, because I can go back and watch my videos and see like the agony that I was in when I was working on them the first few times. So that is one of the big things that makes you recognize that you're moving forward. Um, strangely satisfying to work on like stuff that probably before I started this would have seemed horrifically boring. But now I'm like, Oh, this is great. I love this stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So that's one of the highs, I guess there are some, some of the sections that I just, that have just been a struggle for me. Um, but mostly it's just, I'm not like a particularly relaxed or chill person. Like I'm not just like a cool laid back person who sits back and draws for two hours. No problem many days I am just really frustrated and it just takes so much time for me to, and I'm getting better, but just to just chill out. And that is a hard thing for me to learn because it does not come naturally, but those low points definitely come when I'm just like feeling really frustrated and can't seem to like see, see the big picture. Sure. Yeah. I think what's, what's maybe helpful with that, like for people that are experiencing that. Uh, sometimes when I've watched Jeff's videos, he's done book reviews and I've watched him talk about a specific book. And what I do is I immediately go and I buy that book and I start to read it and you can kind of see where his philosophy comes from. And it helps you when you run into roadblocks like that. And I think the biggest one, which I could also put a link to in the description is mastery. Uh, what I actually did for my advanced class of high school students is I purchased all of them a copy of this book. And the book is exactly what you're talking about, about sort of embracing that plateau when you don't feel like you're growing or you're, you're kind of frustrated and you're not seeing any results. Like I said, just sort of taking that on and going, this is part of it. Like I'm going to enjoy the journey instead of looking for the gratification or the, or the end goal, like winning the competition you know, like enjoy the training, like every day you're going to work out so that you can win the competition. Um, so that's a great book. And then the art spirit is another one where you can kind of just browse through and they're little paperback books that are relatively cheap, but yeah, I love the Robert Henry quotes that Jeff does during the videos. He is a Zen master. And sometimes I'm just like, are you serious? Are you really that like chill? So that's pretty aspirational, um, to get to that level, but that is one really nice thing about the online program. I love watching the videos. I usually watch the videos, even if I've seen them a bunch of times, I watch them before I start to draw for a couple minutes, just because it helps you get in the right mindset. Because sometimes if you're just working on your own, it's hard to take a moment and step back and see that it's supposed to be fun and be reminded that it's a process and a journey, just like you're saying that right that's the point of it sure yeah what i i used to just play the video in the background even i would watch it and then as i was doing the lessons i would play the video in the back it's almost like background noise instead of listening to music i would have this play in the background and i just sort of be listening to it or then i'd look up and go okay here's where he and he's obviously way faster than you know because you can't try to draw along with him because you're just gonna <laughs> You're just going to go crazy, but you're just sort of like, I'm going to pause that and I'm going to catch up to you and then we'll continue. (laughs) Together. (laughs) Right, together. Absolutely. And then what are your thoughts on the the format in terms of like 
the format being like the online idea of this independent study? Do you feel like you're alone on an island or what, you know, like you said, you, you'll watch the videos multiple times to, to sort of do that. Do you look at that? Like what are the positives and negatives of the format of the online class? I think if I hadn't already been through a university program that was sort of the typical like collaborative critique based format, it would be different. But since I've already kind of done that, I know what it looks like. I know what an art critique is like. I know a lot of the basics. I know just the general feeling of like what it's like to be in art school. So I don't feel like I miss out too much on that, but obviously it's more fun when you're with a group. Do I feel like I'm on an isolated and not really and part of it might be because i have my youtube channel and i get to interact with a lot of people which sort of feels like i'm in an online classroom whereas i think if you just did the videos and you didn't interact on the forums and you didn't really get in touch with anybody else you probably would feel a little bit out on your own but for me the youtube community has been really great for just like asking questions and getting feedback on things and also you get critiques even with the lowest level membership, you still get critiques from people and they're good. They're very good. One thing that I think could be a pro or a con, depending on what kind of personality type you have, is if you're really competitive, you'll probably get better in a physical school. I'm really competitive. And part of the reason I did not want to go back to physical school was because I found that in my undergraduate, you just, it makes you sort of like negative sometimes. So I'm trying to take this like as a personal experience as opposed to a competitive experience. And for online, that's a really great tool because you can work at your own pace and you don't have to compare yourself to other people and it's very independent. So for me, that worked out really well. It does come down to who you are as a person. You know, you have to be motivated, independently motivated, intrinsically motivated. You have to say, this is what I'm going to do and nothing's getting in my way. I don't know too many people who are going to get up at 6 30 a.m and draw for three hours that's that's awesome but i i don't feel confident like telling a student yeah you should definitely try that yeah and it's also a, a kind of a time question too it's if you don't have those time the time to do it you're just going to be disappointed and that's that's really sad because well, i think a lot of people want to learn this stuff but they have jobs and they have kids and it's just it's not fair to yourself to not set yourself up for success. Like if you don't have the time, and I think people, there's no wrong way to do it, but you have to know. And I think people do know what, what works for them. So you just have to kind of be in touch with that. I'm going to ask the artist a question. Apple or PC? Oh, I definitely am a Mac person. Painting or drawing? Drawing, but mostly because I don't know how to paint. <laughs> Worst job you've ever had? I hate to say this, but I was a camp counselor when I was a fresh after my freshman year of college. And the combination of just like sleep deprivation and so just kind of overworking made me think that it was my worst job. I mean, I guess, yeah, I'd have to say that. Dogs or cats? Dogs. I have a dog. You might be able to see her crying over there. <laughs> she pretty well right now. Favorite type of food? Bread. Specifically toast. <laughs> what is your geek? So what's geek? Oh, I think I think I'm, I'm still a design geek. My geek is Shopkins. <laughs> but I'm geeking them upstairs. What is in your cup in the morning? <laughs> Tea. It used to be coffee, but when I started doing Watts, I found that my hand was just like too jittery after I had coffee. So I stopped drinking coffee for Watts of Tilly. Let it be known. That's a sacrifice. It was really sad. <laughs> Thanks so much. I appreciate it. And I mean, I had fun with that. Hopefully you, you uh, Yeah, that was nice. Kind of that. got me out of my little personal isolation here. So Yeah, right on. Well, thanks again. I appreciate it. And uh, take care and get back to work if that's what's uh, what's going on there. Yeah. Real work, unfortunately. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm a big fan of the Atelier system. I ran across it years ago where I was on YouTube and I actually watched one of Jeff's orientation videos for his Atelier. And 
you know, while watching that, I was like, everything this guy's saying is what is what I believe to be the truth. And I believe to be the path that I am supposed to be on. So it was like a total like no brainer that I needed to get uh, get going with the online school, which I enjoyed thoroughly. And um, again, I'm going to link up to that orientation video below. I'm going to link up to Becca's channel below. Um, and uh, so you so you all can check that out. Thanks for watching. Like, there's like a little button that they put on the laptop or something. And then they say, click it. And then you can never even miss a video. Hmm. That's if you subscribe.